For the Nikon Z6 III, one of the biggest improvements that helps across the board is its new sensor. So same 24 megapixel resolution, but it's a partially stacked sensor, which means the readout is way, way faster, which means autofocus is better. Uh, video is gonna be better as well. There's less rolling distortion. So a lot of overall benefits that any type of user is going to see because of that sensor, along with the XP7 processor, we first saw come in with the Z8, Z9. All of that kind of ties into kind of broadening the reach of who this camera is gonna be really good for. I think if you're really gonna try and distill it down to just a couple kind of silos, the easy ones are the wedding, the event shooters, uh, maybe some sports as well, who they don't necessarily need the 45 megapixel resolution of a Z8 or Z9. They still want that smaller file size, Wedding shooters might be shooting thousands of shots per day and they wanna keep that as kind of small as possible. So 24 megapixels gives them the technology that they want, but it also gives them the file size as well. And then for video, somebody who wants to kind of run and gun, somebody like a one man, couple man crew who wants something small, agile, maybe you're throwing it on a gimbal and you still wanna be able to go in, get high quality raw video, you're able to go and record 6K, 60p raw with our Nikon and raw. You can go and shoot 4K or raw video, just gives the ability for, for that smaller crew to make sure that any resolution, any file type that they're looking for, they're able to go and record it directly in camera if they want. Much as the Z6 and Z2 were hybrid, cameras this really kind of enables no matter what resolution it is you're looking for no matter what it is you're expecting this can go and do uh, 4k so 24 30 60 120p no problem uh, if you want even faster uh, in terms of the the, uh, the the frame rates you can get up to 240p at full hd and then if you say well i want more than 4k but i don't want to shoot raw and get 6k is there anything well there's 5.4k as well so 5.4k at 24 30 60p and then you get into the raw then you get into the 24 30 and 60 for shooting and raw and it just kind of gives you a lot of different options to choose from all recorded internally so you don't have to go and carry around an external recorder you don't have to worry about any of that you can go record directly to the cf express type b card autofocus is key it's really Z8, Z9 level type of autofocus. So because of the partially stacked sensor, the readout speed enables way, way more autofocus calculations per second than we've been able to do before at this price point. So really getting the autofocus to the level that people have been hearing about for the last couple of years on the Z8, Z9, that's definitely the big one, autofocus. Next is the EVF experience. The brightest EVF that's ever been out there, 4,000 nits. You have uh, the highest resolution Nikon has ever done at 5.7 million dots. The widest color gamut that's ever been put into an EVF. When you're shooting wildlife, sports, one of the biggest, I'll say, detractors for shooting mirrorless is you're gonna get blackout. When you use the electronic shutter, you get no blackout when you're at 20 frames a second with autofocus, with metering, so there's no downsides to it. The experience overall when shooting with that EVF is no matter what it is you're looking for. Do you want better resolution? It's there. Do you want better brightness? It's there. Do you want to go and shoot action and not have any blackout? It's there as well. What else do I have for you? Now, this is going to be a departure for this series, and it is a fully flip out rotating screen. We know that this could be um, a feature that a lot of video users will love. Um, it's gonna be divisive on the stills side of things because you're a still user and you may want the, the, the um, very angle screen that our Z8, Z9 have, but this being kind of the best hybrid camera we ever had, we really wanted to make sure that it had that fully flip out screen so that whether you're behind the camera or in front of the camera, you're able to go and kind of get the best view experience. With the Z6 III, we have something new. It's called Nikon Imaging Cloud. It's going to do a couple of different things for the user. It's going to try and make their life easier when it comes to doing firmware, offloading their photos, getting them to a place without having to physically go and do it themselves. You access it through a browser, whether it's on your uh, smartphone, whether it's on your, your home computer. By accessing it, you can go and set up a few things. Right now, if you wanted to go and do a firmware update, you're able to go basically have it set up just like you would with your smart device. It tells you at two in the morning when your phone is plugged in, you will go and get an automatic update to the latest firmware. Well, your camera will now do the same thing. Your Z6 III will automatically connect and as long as it's plugged in, 
it will go and download the firmware to automatically do it for you. You don't even need a memory card in the camera. It'll just automatically download it and you're all set to go. You're also able to, let's say you're shooting all day, uh, shooting all day and you get home. You don't wanna go and pop out the memory card and do it all yourself, but you wanna start editing your photos in the morning when you wake up. Well, if you have it connected to your Nikon Imaging Cloud, you can have it set up so that, okay, start transferring files. Plug in the camera, because it could take a while, especially if you're shooting all raw. And it'll just automatically, using your home Wi-Fi, start transferring your photos to the Nikon Imaging Cloud. First Nikon to, to have that, cameras in the future will have it, but I don't know any going backwards will. This is really gonna excite a lot of people because getting these features at a price point that wasn't available before, they saw the Z8, they saw the Z9, and they might've said, oh, I love the features of the Z9, but I'm not gonna go and spend $7,000 on, on a camera body. Well, this coming in at $33.99 really is gonna pique a lot of people's interest, getting the tech from those higher end kind of um, top level cameras, but bring it into a price point that a lot of people are really gonna look at and say, wait a second, that, that is my budget. That is what I was looking at doing. I had to kind of give up things before. Now you're really kind of checking off a lot of the boxes and doing it all within your budget.